Hey there, everybody. So I had to click through the story again a little bit. But so... But so, uh, yeah, we're back, um, debating whether or not to eat a boy's soul. So, do we flee like a coward like this character is, or do we do our duty finally? Oh, by the way, again, likely going to be swearing in this video because this is not a pleasant you know, type of thing, and, you know, all that type of stuff, and I'm not gonna try and resist it for this one, so, yeah, just wanted to warn you. Uh, I'm gonna pick Eat Adam's Soul, because I can't in good conscience just leave the family to suffer, so I'm gonna say, oh, but we are role-playing a little bit, though. Ah, uh, fate. All right, I said, I'll do it. The silver coin hidden beneath my shirt warmed in anticipation. I tried to hide my shock. I was unaccustomed to any form of magic, but especially to the rare magic occasionally found in certain metals. This story, it's so repetitive. Mayor Valley wasn't paying any attention to me. She opened her son's shroud without flinching at the wounds. I stood there and rested my palms on the dead man's bare chest, wondering if I still remembered the words. Touching his body was like touching a wax figure. I shivered and closed my eyes. The old speech filled my mouth as if it had never left. Give your soul to me, and I will carry it in my heart of hearts. I will carry you all my life. I will, I will carry you to the other land. Adam Valley's soul crept up my fingers, heating them with a gentle warmth that increased quickly until I cracked open my eyes to, ma to be sure I wasn't burning alive. Something like a spark jump... <laughs> a typo. Something like a spark jumped from his skin to my fingers and the pain spiked. Scream in agony or jerk your hands away. I'ma choose scream in agony. We're in this in for a penny in for a pound. Mayor Valley glared at me, and I bit my lip, vowing to keep a respectful silence in the future. The searing pain settled and faded away to nothing. Phone, could you not? I felt a brief sense of heaviness on the left side of my chest, and then my body felt perfectly normal once more. I'd worked. I'd eaten Adam's soul. I stepped away from the body and gave Mare Valley an awkward bow. She had the bearing of someone who liked to be bowed to, because I clearly know what I'm doing. The magically activated tin panel on her door binged loudly to indicate the arrival of a friendly visitor, but Miss Valley didn't move. Oh uh, boy. So, we just absorbed Adam's soul into our soul. I'm roleplaying a little bit, sort of, maybe, kind of, I don't know. But... So, like, they absorb these souls, and then when they die, they have to carry everyone to this other land place thing. Her maidservant hurried to answer it, scrubbing her face with her hands in an effort to hide the tears lingering there. Aww, let her cry. 
she returned in a much more decorous fashion to announce a Miss Mary Valiant. Va Valiant. Valley and Valiant. I okay. My late sister's child. I'm just gonna make him have an evil voice. Mayor Valley said. Mayor Valley said to me, and nodded for permission for the maidservant to show her in. The woman who came in was my age, wearing a linen smock and carrying a basket of fresh bread. She greeted her aunt and I, and then paused as she realized she couldn't set the basket down on the kitchen table. Just walk in and see a body. It's fine. <laughs> After a moment's hesitation, she opened the wooden cupboard and put the bread inside. Well, I guess what else are you going to do? I'm going to save it by here. So can I not? So can I can I save? I want I want to save. Okay. Maybe not then. After a moment's hesitation. Okay, I read this. Turning back, she gently touched her dead cousin's arm. Oh, she touched her dead cousin's arm gently as if to wake him. I kept my mouth shut with a supreme effort, knowing I lacked the people skills to give her any comfort. She smiled at me, as if the tears on her lashes were nothing but an illusion. My father has prepared a bed for you, she said, and we've plenty of food for a stranger who's done us such a kindness. Call me Mary. I'm not one for for I'm not one for formalities. Nonsense, Mary," said Mayor Valley, moving towards me to grab hold of my wrist before I escaped. The Great One will stay with me. Oh boy, I don't want to stay with you. How about that? How about that's my, that's my opinion. That's a thing. I don't want to stay with you. Each woman turned her steady gaze on me, and I realized that they were waiting for me to choose. Oh, great. So pin this on me. I had to disappoint one of them. I'm gonna go with Mary. I'm gonna go with Mary, because uh, uh, Mary seems nice. I like Mary. I won't trespass on your grief any longer, Mare Valley. I gathered my few possessions ready to leave with the informal Mary. Mare Valley was visibly furious. Oh, fuck. Again, I had said at the top of this video I was gonna swear. Here's where it starts. Oh, fuck. Mayor Valley was visibly furious. She took out a loaf of bread and began sawing it into chunks on the bench without releasing me from her glare. Okay. Fuck. Mary casually walked in front of her and offered to slice the bread. Mayor Valley put the bread away at once, but kept hold of the knife. Mary said her good bu guys, good guys. Okay. Mary said her goodbyes and led me away. Ah. I was desperately relieved to escape Mayor Valley's fury. I hope you don't mind. Mary whispered as we walked to her home, catching glimpses of cool, of the coal refinery chimneys between other houses. Most people find Aunt Faye a little overwhelming. 
I'm grateful, Miss Valiant, I told her, feeling lighter already. I told you to call me Mary, she said, and then smiled. After all, we're practically family now. I wonder if this was a bad idea. Is she gonna end up being evil? I don't want Mary to be evil. Can she not? Mary showed me upstairs to a room that was clearly her own, saying she would take the floor in her father's room. I, I don't need a bed, I said, embarrassed. Usually I, I just sleep on the ground. You can sleep on the floor here if you wish, she replied. It's part of the room after all. Oh, and you can adjust the floor vent just here. I looked where she pointed and saw a mist rising from the floor. My kitchen engine's underneath, she said. I have a jury-rigged power loom attached to the stove. Then I drilled through the floor because why not? I like this room. I enjoy this room. This sounds like a room that I want. Because my room gets very cold in the winter. For the first time, I noticed the grease under her fingernails. I'm sorry, I said, about your cousin. She smiled that smile again, holding herself together as a gift to me. What about you? Do you have family at- do you have a family? A home? Uh, no. <laughs> oh boy. So the answer to that question would be, uh, no. No, we don't. So, we're telling her about the mother or about our sister? No, let's, um, let's go mom. Mom's always a good choice. My mother is still living, as far as I know. I left her in Scarsdale. She was once quite famous for her soul-eating magic, but didn't want me to be forced into the same career. Mary's eyes widened in horror. And then you came here, and were made to eat Adam's soul. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not like that. I said, your cousin's soul isn't the first soul I've eaten. Go on, she said. I love a story, especially one with magic. Evelyn and I were hunting rabbits near our village. To my surprise, the words spilled easily from my, the words spilled easily from my mouth. I hadn't spoken Evelyn's name out loud in years, but I still remembered how offended I'd felt that she was a better shot than I was. Just thinking of her brought back the sharp smell of pine needles and rabbit scat and my pride that our mother let us slip through the trees on our own. Like wild animals, already mature and fending for themselves. Um, you mean like a bear? You mean like a bear would? I, I like bears. Bears are nice. Well, they're not nice, but, you know. We were arguing as usual. I wanted to go home because it was getting dark, but she was too proud to return empty-handed. She slapped me. I knocked her down. She wailed like a banshee, and I told her to shut her sauce box. Her sauce box. I've never heard of it. Wow, okay. Mary listened impatiently her eyes steady on mine, and her lips slightly parted. And that's where I'm gonna leave you! Yay! Cliffhanger! Love those! Hi, cat! My cat just walked up to me. So, hi, kitty. Yeah, good boy. Meow! Meow! Yeah, there's a meow. But... But so... I'm gonna leave it right there, and if you smiled during this video, I'm glad. Though you probably didn't again for this one. Oops. Bye!